Hello, this is group 3 consisting of Vaishali Purkasta, Manish Das, Pranav Kumar Kotoki and Debor Shikyo and we welcome you to our BTEC project presentation. This time we did our project on micro UAV with smart surveillance target identification of enemy or suspected individual. First of all, we would like to extend our gratitude to Professor Kandrapa Kumar Sarma sir and other esteemed faculty members of our department for their extraordinary help and supervision while doing this project. So the outline of this presentation goes like this. We will start off with little introduction to our project. Then we will mention what motivated us to do this project. Then there is methodology and problems identified where we will break our bigger problem into some smaller sub problems and try to solve them individually. Then we shall go on with block diagram and work we have done in this project. Then we will try to conclude by revisiting the main points of our solution. Subsequently, we discuss the future prospect of this project. So let's start off with introduction. A swarm is a large group of an entity that works in collectiveness. So a swarm of UAVs is a set of aerial robots that work collectively to achieve a singular goal. In terms of functioning, a swarm of UAVs is classified in two ways, single layered and multi layered swarms. In single layered architecture, each drone acts as an individual entity, whereas in multi layered architecture, there are two or more than two layers of control. Drones commonly fit in military purposes, but recently it has also witnessed many civilian applications. Further, swarm of drones can be used in diverse fields like cinematography, mapping of landslides, crop damage and flood assessments and whatnot. In this project, we went forward with developing a secured communication technique for the drones to communicate and a vision system for the drones to help them fly autonomously. Motivation. Our, we have always wanted to make a cost effective and agile surveillance system because there is a huge need for it in the fields of security, agriculture and disaster management. Having got this opportunity, we tried to make a surveillance system with drones. Moreover, we were highly inspired by how nature works in collectiveness. For example, swarm of bees and swarm of locusts as seen in the picture. Literature review. Before starting off with our work, we reviewed a good number of articles and papers related to our problem statement and found out that there is a greater need for an agile, non-stationary surveillance system and also there was a lack of secure communication system between autonomous robots in a swarm. So we went forward first developing a secured communication technique for the drones in the swarm to communicate and then we developed a vision system for the drones to for autonomous navigation. Methodology. In order to impart security in communication between the drones, we have built a message encryption and decryption algorithm which will use RGB images to hide messages inside them. This method is commonly known as steganography. For simulating a real environment, we will add some noise to the steganograph image and test if the decryption algorithm can decrypt the noisy message correctly at the receiver. In the second part, we will build up build parts of the vision system for a drone to detect objects of interest, motion detection, background and background elimination. And lastly, we will use stereo vision technique to solve some challenging problems like finding depth from 2D images and 3D reconstruction. Operation of a single drone. This diagram depicts the entire functioning of a single autonomous drone. In this project, we have kept our focus on obstacle detection, secured communication, and building parts of the path detection module where, where we will be using stereo vision as we have discussed in the previous section. This diagram depicts the communication between controller and the drones. Each drone will have Zigbee or Wi-Fi module for communicating among them as well as the controlling server. Problems identified. The primary problems identified were identification of target using swarm UAV, object tracking using swarm UAV. Another secondary problem is that drones as big as the one in the picture cannot be used in swarms because of their bulkiness. Work done. Our entire work can be divided into two parts. Part one is concentrated on building an encryption and decryption algorithm for secure communication link between drones. This diagram shows the flow logic of transmitting and receiving message. 
the message to encrypt is a sequence of characters this sequence of characters is converted into a sequence of ascii values and then to binary values now the message has been converted into its binary equivalent the encryption algorithm uses this binary string and the rgb image to embed the message inside the image let's dive deep into the encryption algorithm a rgb color image and a binary string is provided to the algorithm it, it selects a predefined color plane of the rgb image it can be either red green or blue plane performs zor operation between every pixel in the first bit plane and every character's first bit this process is repeated for second bit plane and second bit of every character in the message and so on and so forth for all the seven bits bit planes we keep the 8 bit plane untouched as it contains maximum details decryption algorithm while decryption the same color plane used during encryption should be used for encrypted image as well as the password image zor operation will be performed between a pixel in the encrypted image and the corresponding pixel in the password image step 3 is performed for all the lower 7 bit planes of both the images at last we joined all the bits got in step 3 and 4 and converted them into ascii values to get the characters this is a screenshot from our encryption application where on the left hand side there is a there is an image in the middle we have got the message which reads like this this is project phase lab we are group 3 this message is encrypted inside the left hand image left hand side image and we got the result on the right hand side image this is the result obtained from the previous screenshot left hand side is the original image and on the right hand side is the encrypted image as you can see there is not much difference between the two images and this indicate and this uh proves that the encryption algorithm is efficient this is the decoding screenshot of our application so on the left hand side there is a there is the encrypted image or the steganographed image and on the right hand side we have selected the correct password image and we when we press on the decode button it decodes the message correctly as you can see the message used in the encryption and decryption are same if we go back two slides back the message says that this is project phase lab we are group 3 this is the message that was used during encryption and the message received during decryption is also same so this is indicating that the decryption algorithm is working so this is a video describing our describing the function functioning of our application so we choose the image we want to encrypt and then we choose the text we want to insert inside the image and we press the encode button and after some time we get the encoded image which has the text inside the image Now after we have got that we can go to decoding section and select the steganographed image and we can select the correct password image as you can see i have selected the correct password image and we when we press on the decode the message is decrypted correctly now let's select an image that is not the correct password image so first we select the select the steganographed image and then we select a wrong a wrong password image and let's see will it decode or not so we can see that the message is not decrypted correctly it shows many errors and the uh, and it has not shown any message so let's select a different image this time so we have selected a different image and we have and 
we have selected the correct password image this time also since the left hand side is left hand side image is different so the decoding algorithm will not work so this proves that our application is running correctly so this is the statistics of our encryption algorithm so we have used two sample images with three tests each first we have used uh, a message of with 39 characters long and the average time for running the algorithm is 9.66 seconds the dimension of the first image is 1298 into 1300 pixels this gives us the maximum number of characters that can be encoded inside the image that is 5,062,200 characters for the second sample image we again used three test cases and for this time we used 24 characters long message and the average time for running the algorithm is 6.33 seconds and this time the dimension of the image is 1536 into 864 pixels and the maximum character that can be encoded inside the image is 3,981,312 characters. So this is the statistics of the decoding image, uh, decoding results. For decoding also we use two sample images and three tests each. The message lengths are taken to be 37, sorry 39 and 24 characters and the average time for execution has come up to be nearly one second. Image steganography under noisy condition. To check reliability of image steganography algorithm under noisy condition, we added salt and pepper noise to the encoded message. We checked the number of characters that has changed in the encoded message. Next, we try to reduce the error rate with the help of filtering procedure. This is the entire data sheet of our experiment. We used a total of 150 test cases. And let's summarize this data sheet in the next slide. So to summarize the data sheet, we have taken a total of 150 test cases and three different noise densities. The length of message we have varied between 5 to 54 characters. We could limit the percentage of error between 0 to 15 percent. But if we restrict the length of message below 50 characters, and the noise density around 0.05 then the error could be limited efficiently between 0 to 5 percent this marks the start of our phase 2 in phase 2 we implemented a vision system for the drone we developed a motion detection program in python along with object detection based on specific color range lastly we use stereo vision for 3d reconstruction from a pair of 2d stereo images object detection here our task was to detect a particular object and track it by establishing correspondence between the detected object from one frame to another an object has many global features like color shape which describe the image object as a whole these features can be used for detection of an object and tracking it in a sequence of frames we used color as a feature to detect object because this will help us detecting an enemy if we know the color of their uniform this is the flow chart depicting the object detection algorithm so there so let's discuss the algorithm in details here we developed a program that can detect and track color images which can which we can set manually and and can be changed anytime with the help of camera colored image is captured and that is converted from rgb to hsv the set of color images is fixed and morphological transformations are performed filtering operations are done and the object with the set color is detected the program is able to decide whether to move forward or backward by tracking a blue color object 
So this is a screenshot from our output. Here you can see we have selected a range of blue colors to be detected and the program is detecting the exact range of blue colors um, and we can see that it is detecting the water bottle and on the above left hand side you can see that it is generating a text called move backward so since the bottle is very near to the camera so it is showing move backward and if we move the bottle backward to a certain extent it will show move forward so, so this program allows the user to detect blue colored object as the program enables the user to set the range of colors used for tracking we have assumed that blue color is for enemy and red color is for non enemy result and discussion when any object that is the enemy came closer to the camera that is the drone then we then one command is generated like move backward similarly when object goes away from the camera then one command is generated like move forward by getting this type of command the drone can move and track the object in focus automatically without any extra instructions by controller background detection and elimination a program is set to detect, detect the background and eliminate it in order to specify the detected object. Masking is used here in this process. We have masked the background to eliminate the distractions in the background and maximize the focus on the detected object. It is most useful for outdoor environment. Motion detection. This program detects any motion captured by the camera. We have used this to detect any motion, be it person, vehicle, or drones, in any restricted areas, which could be any enemy, which could be any enemy movement. The software and hardware hierarchy to accomplish motion detection is like follows. We will use a Pi camera or any web, any camera. That camera will feed the output to the computer system with a python software running the python software will then track the track the moving object this is the motion detection algorithm in flowchart form the camera will capture a stream of images if the capture is successful then each frame will be used to, to detect the motion each frame will be converted into grayscale. Then the previous frame will be subtracted from the next frame. And this subtraction will give us any information of motion. If there is no motion, then the subtraction will give us zero. And zero means that there is no motion. And if the result comes up to be non-zero, non then there is motion. So then the program will obtain the center and size of the object based on their dimension. Check if the object region overlaps. And if it overlaps, then it will check if it is overlapping too much. If it is overlapping too much, then it will not show the smaller object. And if it is not overlapping too much, then it will shift the center and reduce the size of the smaller object. On the other hand, if the object is not overlapping then it will return the dimensions of the frame of the moving object working on motion detection we have developed a program that can detect any kind of motion regarding any dimension and color within a specified range in our program we converted colored motion objects to grayscale which will identify the larger or bigger size motion objects however if the contour is too small and it will not detect the object in motion this is a screenshot from the motion detection software as you can see the person in the frame tries to move and the program has detected the movement results of motion detection this program recognizes various particular objects whether it is moving or not further it can be helpful to detect enemies or any other thing if there is an 
any kind of motion especially in motion restricted areas like bordered areas moreover the grayscale part will showcase the results of bigger motion objects which will be helpful now let's dive deep into stereo vision system for a drone for an autonomous drone to navigate through an environment it must be able to sense how its surrounding is aligned with the help of only one pinhole camera we can enable to get the depth information with the help of stereo vision system it can be achieved by using two cameras it works in a similar way as our eyes work so what is stereo vision stereo vision is a process of comparing two or more views of a scene and recovering depth information from the camera images by estimating relative depth of each point in the scene it is used by us to estimate depth in what we are looking its application is an advanced driver assistance system ads and robot navigation how does stereo vision work humans have two eyes and a little distance between them this creates a slightly different view of the same area seen from the two eyes the brain takes this information from each eye and unites them into one picture interpreting the the slight difference between each view as depth robots use a pair of stereo cameras to mimic this pair of eyes so this is so here both the images describe how stereo vision will be implemented using a pair of stereo cameras stereo vision pipeline for obtaining depth information through stereo vision we have to follow this sequence of steps in the pipeline first comes camera, camera calibration it finds intrinsic parameters like focal length image centers of camera lens and distortions in the camera lens it also finds the extrinsic parameters which include relative translation and rotation between the two cameras an image is a 2d representation of a 3d real world scene the mapping of 3d real world coordinates to the 2d image coordinates is done by a series of transformations the goal of camera calibration is to determine these parameters for these transformations in stereo setup we also need to determine the orientation of camera 2 relative to camera 1 rectification by standard it removes the lens distortion and also tries to rectify stereo pair to standard form by standard form we mean the epipolar lines in the two images are made parallel stereo correspondence stereo correspondence uses epipolar geometry to find point correspondences in the left and right images to understand it let's go back to slide 42 here in the left image we can see that the two cameras are pointing at an object at point p since the object at point p appears in both the images we can search for it in the target image the naive approach would be to search point p in the whole 2d target matrix but this will make the process much slower and hence it is not efficient an alternative to this is that we can search point p along the line which it is constrained to this line is called epipolar line this reduces the time complexity of search from 2d grid to 1d line and makes the process significantly faster next step is triangulation triangulation is the calculation of depth of every point in the two images using a set of equations the disparity map is used and the value of disparity in the two images is used to convert into depth information experimental result of stereo vision system so our stereo vision system needs two inputs of left image and right image this is the scene observed by two cameras side by side so output of cam camera calibration so while we calibrate the cameras 
the rms error the rms camera calibration error should be below 1 1 pixel and as you can see we have got an rms error of 0 of 0 0.06 0 0.06 that is that indicates that our ca camera calibration is correct then on the next step we get the output of the stereo rectification and if the calibration is stereo calibration is correct we get a good result of stereo rectification on the left hand side image you can see that the, the left and right images are overlapped on each other and they are unrectified on the right hand side you can see that the output after rectification so both the images are now at the same level this is the output of the disparity estimation from the stereo pair you can see that the lady was in front of the gentleman and and the color and the color in the lady is lighter as compared to color of the gentleman so in the right on the right hand side you can see a scale of the disparity estimation so objects nearer to the camera are lighter in color and objects far away from the camera are blue in color so this is a video demo video from a 3d reconstruction of scene from disparity map So as you can see, it is a 3D point cloud generated from the disparity map we have got in the previous slide. You can see that this is the x, x axis and this is the y axis and this is the z axis. So every pixel has a got a z, z value along the z axis. So you can see that the woman in this picture has a lesser z value than the gentleman in the picture. So this means that the woman is in front of the gentleman conclusion the encryption algorithm using an image is quite efficient with respect to speed and capacity the algorithm is quite secure as it will not work until the correct password image is provided our work on communication and then on message encryption will certainly prove to be important in establishing a secure communication link between the drones. We have tried our best in finding 0% error in change in character in presence of 0.1 noise density, but it could not be reduced to zero fully. The object detection algorithm helps in identifying the object from the background using a definite color. The motion detection algorithm is used to detect the motion of a suspected object, whether it is moving or not. Background masking is done so as to avoid any distraction in the background in order to assist object detection. We could reconstruct a 3D scene from a given pair of 2D images. Future work. We have a lot of exciting and challenging future work lined ahead. We have some integrating all the programs so that they work together as one entity. The hard, we will imp implement the hardware part along with artificial intelligence in the system. At the grassroots level, we will be working on decentralized functioning of the drones. This is the Gantt chart of our project timeline. This is the list of references. Thank you.